Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? Are you ready to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Let me try that again. Are you ready to worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? Yeah. All right, that's what we want to hear. That's why we're here, right? Yeah. We're here. We come together. We come together to corporately worship our Lord and our God. We worship the rest of the week for sure, but when we come together as God's children... Man, that's a powerful thing, and the Holy Spirit likes to be amongst the praises of God. So stand up and join us in worship, would you please? Isn't God good? Yes, Kevin, he is. All right. Wow.
Good morning, church family. We do serve an awesome God, yes? I think we can do better than that. I think we serve an amazing God. Don't you agree? Yes. Much better, much better. Well, good morning and welcome, family. It is good to be with you today. As always, it is good to be gathered together in God's house with God's people. Amen? Gather together is the body of Christ. Would you agree with me this morning that Taft and Kern County in general is a great place to live? I mean, where else can you live where you get three of the four seasons in one week, huh? That is pretty amazing. I think we've experienced a little spring, summer, and winter here. Um, so whatever your favorite season is, enjoy, huh? If I could have our ushers come forward this morning, we are going to take our morning tithes and offerings. If you're new with us today, if you're a guest with us, we ask that you keep your wallet in your pocket. What we would ask is that you find that little connect card. And I'm going to call Mary out. Where's Mary? There she is. Fill out a card. Drop it in the offering or put it in the box in the back. Um, fill out that card. It's just a great way we can connect with you. For the rest of us, though, we know that tithes and offerings are a spiritual act of worship, a way of giving back to the Lord for all that he has given us. And so join me in a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for today. We thank you for the time together. We thank you for the time to be in your presence. We thank you for the blessings that you continue to pour out upon us. God, today we just pray your blessing over this offering. We pray your blessing over each gift and each giver. And just pray that you would help us to be good stewards of the resources you give that we might then just extend your kingdom, where we have asked these things in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Would you welcome Kathy Oren up this morning as she makes her way? Good morning, Doc. How are we doing today? I'm good. Thank you. How is being a grandma's again is all going well? And yes, it's going very well. Great. Good, good. Are you on? Am I on? Yeah. Okay. Ah, what a week it's been, huh? Yes, it has. Um, now, we are not finished with, uh, well, I guess we're actually starting the next week today. So we have Awanas today at 2 o'clock from 2 to 4. Kids 3 and potty train through 18 years of age are welcome. That's right in here today. And Awana Family Day is coming up on April 28th. I don't know the specifics of that. So if you've been part of Awanas or are going to be a part of Awanas or want to be, come and join us. It's kind of, a, they, I'm not real from, this is my first time doing Awanas, you know, and so um, Jacob and Elena Farewell do a great job um, leading that. But it's an awards day, so kids that have learned scripture and passages and stuff like that will get awards, and we're going to have a barbecue. We're inviting the parents of these families to come and be a part of that as well. And so... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good afternoon um, with the kids, and that'll kind of wind the season up for Awanas, um, and so we will talk about kicking that back off again in the near future, but yeah, good. that's what that's all about. All right. Now you know. Now I do. Uh, grief Share is happening Sundays at 2 p.m. at Calvary Temple, and that is a wonderful place to seek um, the blessings of, of people that have been down a similar path mm. and uh, can help you through that, and it's it's wonderfully done. We have participated in that in our house, and uh, I I heartily recommend those that uh, resource to people that are going through a grieving time. That's good. Men's Bible study continues on Tuesdays at 6 a.m. in the fellowship hall, and the youth group continues to meet on Wednesdays from 6 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. And I want to know why you guys always need snacks. Simon, where are you at? Oh, Simon's the reason you always need uh, <laughs> Well, oh, say no more. Oh. No, well, Johanna, the kids eat. Those kids can eat. Yeah, any, a teenager's okay, so eat. so let's get specific about these snacks. Okay. What are we talking about with snacks? Because we seem to have a need for them constantly. So I think... Um, Granola bars, goldfish, potato chips, the little packages of chips, or Rice Krispie treats are good. Um, Kathy Lee brought Hostess cupcakes. Those weren't bad. <laughs> 
So really anything like that, um, yeah. Okay, now we all know what we mean by snacks and we can bring them to church with us when we come next Sunday and we can put them in the church um, in kitchen, the kitchen yeah. and they will be safe there, I presume, and um, we'll be all set. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, all right, moving on. Live scan will be here Sunday, May 5th. Now, what else is Sunday, May 5th? Cinco de Mayo. That's, that just means May 5th, right? Cinco de Mayo. May the 5th. Yes, but it's Cinco de Mayo. So, May the 5th. So if you are going to be live scanned, we think you should might have a snack after church. Oh, uh, I see where you're going. And we thought about this in our Sunday school class. And Sierra believes <laughs> that it should be tacos. Okay. You're bringing the tacos. Amen. <laughs> All right. Sarah, Sierra, you will get help with that. We'll, we'll plan something. <laughs> so, so live scan is very important because, as you know, our esteemed state of California has decided that everyone who works with youth needs to be fingerprinted, which is a nice, polite way of... Uh, no, fingerprinting is live scan, politely said. So um, we are going to do that. For those of us that work with children, and I would like to see that number among us increase, um, you will be live scanned on May 5th, and it will be uh, on the church to do that. You do not have to pay for that. But you also need some training, and I understand the training is still available, isn't training it? Training is always available. It's mandated reporter training, and so if you, if you would like to work with our kids, just let us know. We'd be happy to get you queued in for all of that. Um, yeah. And it's not horrible. For those of us that have had training online, I know you, it sends a shudder up your spine. But this actually is very well done. And I've had many, many trainings online. And uh, it's very, um, it's interesting, it's informative, and it's not horrible. So uh, we can help you with that. But uh, it's very important. We want to be in compliance with the state of California. And we also want to have many people that can step into a role, even if it's not every Sunday, but can step into a role at some time at our church to help out with children. It's a wonderful thing to do, and it's when, and I see a hand. Um, if you're working vacation Bible school, I'm assuming that that might be something that would be helpful. So not, necess not necessarily on, so Krista's question with VBS, um, if you're a volunteer, there's a, there's a, the law kind of stipulates how many hours you spend with the kid, and yes, we want our kids to be safe. Anybody that has not been, um, gone through the training or been scanned wouldn't be alone with kids anyway, and so I think we're okay there, so. But it might encourage that you might have more. So, yes. And, and really, it is not horrible. I, I, I know as soon as you say there's training online, people go, oh, whoa. But it's, it's good training. Yeah. Did you say something, Shelly? Uh, we always appreciate more. So. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, volunteers to work with children, more is always appreciated. Absolutely. Yep. And we have good kids, so it's not horrible. Again, not horrible. So, okay. Have we killed that one? Yeah. <laughs> All right, crisis care kits. We still need um, some donations for crisis care kits, and our, we are taking donations in the form of money, and a care kit is $15. So if you can find it in your heart to donate $15, you can put a check or uh, something in, a, in the envelope that you see there, or you can uh, give it to somebody who, uh, that would be Lynn. Where is Lynn? There's Lynn. So she will take all those kits with her on Saturday to the NMI Connect Convention at District Assembly this next Saturday. And so, um, yes, our goal is almost met. So it's good. This will okay. be the last week we collect for that. So. Okay. And District Assembly is April 18th to April 20th. That's coming up this week. This week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is the NMI Convention. And I need to tell you guys, pay close attention to the time. They have changed it. It was 6 and then 6.30, and now the official time, 
Are you ready? 7 p.m. Friday night would be the ordination service. And so. And our own pastor is being ordained, and we would love to see everybody there. That is 7 p.m. on Friday night at Olive Knowles Church in Bakersfield. Yep. And the Oaks will meet for lunch on April 28th. If you are an Oak, uh, you may sign up in the foyer for this. This is a wonderful get together, and it's always good. Uh, the celebration fund, are we celebrating? We are. Looks like we have um, the Morris family, looks like. Or no, I'm sorry. Lynn Morris is celebrating. You know, there's special envelopes for this, right? All right. This is very <laughs> So Lynn Morris is celebrating Wes, is, Wes Morris's birthday. Um, and it looks like he's 47. Is that right? Yeah. But, yeah. 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 At 4.52 p.m. So not yet. He's still just 46. So happy birthday, Wes. Yep, he's not here today. Oh. Okay, we're not going to sing to him now. All right. And sanctuary lights, we uh, have them. It's a blessing, and we still need uh, donations to cover the costs of them. We uh, took a huge leap of faith in getting these because we desperately needed them, and now we need to pay for them, apparently. <laughs> Actually, we need to pay back the fund that paid for them. So, Yep, that's good. That's it. They do look good. Kathy, thank you. Would you guys give her a hand this morning? <laughs> well, as before we continue our worship, let's just pray once again. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come to you with all that we have with all that we are, and recognize, God, our need for you in so many ways. We pray, God, for the conflict in Israel and other nations around the world. God, we pray that you would guide and direct our president, our leaders of the world, that you would just guide and direct their steps. God, we pray that you would meet each one of us today in our place of need. Wherever that may be, we ask that, that you would move and work in our relationships, to restore what is broken. We pray for those struggling financially and ask that you would just provide what is needed, God. We pray for those that are sick, for those that are not well and battling cancer. We pray your healing touch would be upon them, God. May you draw near to your children today, for we have asked these things in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Would you stand then as we continue our worship? A prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, Lord, open our eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want, I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Holy, holy, holy 
want to see you. I want to see you. Amen.
Senhor de Reis.
And what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. May we take the name of Jesus and speak it over every aspect of our life. At the name of Jesus, anything from hell has to flee. Nothing can stand against the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing can stand against the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that is available to work in and through us. Oh, Lord God, may we call upon that power. We forever give you glory. We forever give you honor and praise. And it's in Jesus' mighty name, the only name that saves, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be All seated. All right, children, you are excused for Children's Church. for being here. want to thank those that are watching online. This morning, may we just remember that we are gathered here today simply because of the grace of God. The grace that was made available to us through the life, through the death and resurrection of Christ. As Christians, we must never lose sight of the power of Easter because it makes us new. In the first week of our series here, we talked about the fact that it is our faith, our faith in Christ that transforms us into the people that God wants us to be. Last week, we discovered that because of God's grace, we can move past our past. We don't have to stay stuck in the muck anymore. Our past sins our mistakes, our shortcomings, they do not get the final say. They do not get the last word. Jesus does. We are defined by who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so then today, we're going to look to another part at, of, of how just far-reaching the effects of the resurrection are. When God makes us new, we are adopted into the family of God. And that's good news today, to be adopted into the family of God. I recently read an article about a couple that felt that God was leading them to adopt internationally. And the Lord led them to this little girl in India who had limb differences. She, she was born with only a small portion of each arm. And after a year-long process, this mom and dad finally got to fly overseas to bring this little girl home, to become part of a family. The decision that this family made to adopt this little girl transformed her life in every way that you could possibly imagine. She went from having an uncertain future because of her situation, because of her limitations, to a future that is then bright and full of hope. This is the power, and this is the love of being adopted into the family of God. And this little girl's life has been made new. If you would, turn in your Bibles with me to John chapter 1 today. We're going to start in verse 9. But just like this little girl's life has been made new, Jesus' resurrection makes us new as well. Where there was once this great divide between us and God because of our sinful nature, the cross then spans that chasm. It allows us to access God the Father. You see, it is his relationship that changes our relationship with God. 
from enemies to friends. Isn't it good news that we are called children of God? We are children of God here this morning. The most powerful world that the, the most powerful word that we are given in Scripture is that our relationship with God even goes beyond that, beyond being a child of God. He becomes our Father. We are invited into His family because we have been adopted by Him. So let's read together. John chapter 1, verse 9 through 13. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. See, when Jesus came into the world, there were two reactions to his arrival. Some accepted him as the savior of the world, but others rejected him as a fraud and as a fake. John tells us then that those that did receive him, God gave them the right to become children of God. Based on our faith in Jesus, we are then grafted into the family of God. He is our father. Jesus is our brother. The adoption has nothing to do with a physical birth, but rather it is a spiritual one. We become reborn of God by the grace offered to us in Christ. And so the first point I want to make this morning is that everyone, everyone is welcome into God's family. And if we're honest with ourselves this morning, sometimes it's easy to feel like we don't quite fit into the family of God. We have too many blemishes. We've made too many mistakes. How could God possibly love someone like me? But then when you begin to look a little bit closer at Jesus' family tree, you begin to see the fact that we fit right in. We fit right in. The book of Matthew begins with the genealogy of Jesus. And some of the names of, the, of people that show up, there's Jacob. Jacob was a liar. He was a cheat. His name actually translates to deceiver. There was David, who was an adulterer, and Rahab, who was a prostitute. What can seem like a list of broken and flawed people, upon further review, become this beautiful tapestry of the people who are loved by God, that are used by God, that have been welcomed into the family of God. There's a story about a little boy named Jonathan who wanted to learn the Lord's Prayer. He had heard it week after week. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We all know that prayer, right? He heard it over and over again. Come one Sunday, he was ready to go. He was ready to recite it. And so he stands up and he belts it out. Our Father in heaven, I know you know my name. Jonathan may have gotten the words to that prayer wrong, but in the end, he was right, wasn't he? God does know his name. God knows my name. He knows your name. And that's good news this morning. He knows each of us. He knows everything about us. The good, the bad, the ugly, the really ugly. But guess what? He loves us just the same. If the resurrection makes us new by giving us this new birth into a spiritual family. I got to tell you, last week I got a phone call from an individual who was baptized on Easter. And they said, Pastor, I don't know. Something's different. 
I just don't feel the same. I don't want to listen to the rap music on the radio anymore. I said, turn the rap off and tune to 88.3, Life FM. Something has changed. Something is different. We are given this new birth into this spiritual family. And with that, then, we receive the incredible benefits that come to us by being in the family of God. In the book of Acts, these benefits are put on display in the early church. Acts 2, 42 through 47 says this, They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching, the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now then, the first Christians, you know, they weren't too different from us, believe it or not. They were looking for a place to belong. We all want a place to belong. They were in need of this intentional community. They were faced with the struggle of persecution, and they didn't feel at home any longer in their Jewish faith because their dedication was now then to the risen Christ. They found what they were looking for in the family of God. The Bible tells us that these Christians spent time together under the teaching of the apostles. They fellowshiped. They fellowshiped with one another. They ate together. They just lived out life together. They prayed with one another. They shared with one another. And they sacrificially met one another's needs. They enjoyed each other's presence and shared in the common bond of Christ's love. Why? Second point I want to make this morning. Because godly community is attractive. Godly community is attractive. I mean, just look around. Look to your right. Look to your left. Where else would you rather be? This is truly an attractive community. Amen? Amen. Verse 47 of that passage in Acts is compelling. This family, this family that God was building through the church was so attractive that their numbers grew daily. People outside of God's family saw something that they wanted to be a part of. And I think there were two reasons for this. Number one, the family of God does life together. The family of, of God does the family of God does life together. We mostly can fully experience the love and the grace of God when we are connected to one another, when we are in fellowship with one another. It's what the early church understood. They worshiped together, they ate together, they prayed together. They enjoyed each other. They shared openly with each other the struggles, the hurts, the hardships, the good times. And they did so with glad and sincere hearts. And when these elements are all present, it causes this communal flourishing that otherwise just simply wouldn't be possible. I want to brag a little bit this morning about David and Diane Cooper. I don't know what they've done exactly or how they've done it. But one thing I do know is that they gather together occasionally with an amazing group of godly people and individuals from all over who just gather together. They camp together. They eat together. I'm pretty sure they sing praises together. I don't know what all they do together, but I know it's an amazing time. I would encourage you to to talk to them this morning about this community that they have that flourishes 
because of what they're doing. It, flourish, it flourishes together like that, much because of their spirit, of their willingness to gather together. It's much like the, the church we see in Acts 2. They provide an element in the lives of people that encourage growth. It's something you're going to want to be a part of. The elements present the elements present in the lives of the people in the early church created this environment for growth also. They were a family. And what they shared more than anything, church, was love, God's love. First John describes this kind of fellowship. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Here John is telling his readers everything he knows about Christ's sacrificial love. And he does it because it would allow the hearers to have fellowship with one another. The power of this community finds its origins in the fellowship shared with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Secondly, then, the family of God meets each other's needs. It's what the family of God does. The other thing that was attractive about God's family in the early church was the fact that they were meeting each other's needs. They were entrusting to one another their struggles, their trials and needs. Then they were doing what was necessary then to meet those needs. They were the physical presence of God in one another's lives. They were his hands and feet. In order for any family to function in this healthy manner, each individual must be willing to do their part to bring about this growth, this flourishing. The community of faith that exists today is really no different. We've got to be willing to meet the needs of those around us. And when we do, we become attractive to one another. I read something recently that, that convicted me to make sure that I play my part in the family of God. Perhaps this could be helpful to you this morning as well. It read this. It said, this is my church. It is composed of people just like me. It will be a friendly church if I am friendly. It will do a great work if I work. It will, be a gen it will make generous gifts to many causes if I am generous. It will bring others into its fellowship if I bring them. Its seats will be filled if I fill them. It will be a church of loyalty and love and faith and service. If I make it what it is, then I am filled with these. Therefore, with God's help, I dedicate myself to the task of being all these things that I want my church to be. And so this morning... What do you want your church to be? Get involved. But the third point I want to make this morning is to make space at the table. Make space at the table. When we are made new and welcomed into the family of God, it's important that we remind ourselves that this family is meant to grow. It's not meant to stay stagnant. It is meant to continue to grow. When we experience the love of the Father, we are compelled to share it with people who have never felt it before. It reminds me that the Bible tells us, church, we are the light of the world. When we shine brightly through our words, when we shine brightly through our actions, the world does notice. They do. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. 
Our good deeds become invitations to the fellowship, to the community, and to the family that we experience through our faith in Jesus Christ. It's how we make space for others to come and join as well. Matthew says that the response of those who see our acts of love will be to glorify the Father in heaven, that perhaps they too would become his children. You see, it's not about what I do. It's not about what you do. It's about what we do for the kingdom of God. May he receive the glory. Good friend of our family, Pastor Debbie, who came to preach actually one Sunday for us here. I think I had COVID. Imagine that. She has this philosophy that she just naturally lives out. Whether she's known you for years or she's just met you, she always makes room at the table. She would treat you like she's known you for years. I've often asked why. It's because Jesus gathered at the table. He fed those around him, both physically and spiritually. Pastor Debbie makes sure there's always room at the table, and we should do the same, keeping room for others. Is this what is said about us? What if we were known as the kind of people who would always have extra space at the table so that others could be part of the family. This is what the resurrection does in our lives. It makes us new, and it invites us into God's family so that we might invite others as well. Amen? And so this morning, there are two things I want to present to you today. First, coming up on May 4th, Saturday, May 4th. We're going to have John Bench's funeral service right here in our sanctuary. It's going to be followed by a potluck in the fellowship hall. Now, I've got to be honest with you this morning. I've, prior to John's death, I'd only met them a couple different times. And outside of, hi, how you doing? Good to have you here. I really didn't know them very well. So I, I wouldn't say that they belonged in our fellowship. What I can tell you is that they belong to the family of God. Amen? And so Saturday, May 4th, we have a tremendous opportunity as the body of Christ to bless them with this potluck that's going to take place. We're going to have his service at 11, and at 12 uh, we'll be in the fellowship hall, or roughly thereabout, a potluck. And so if you want to come to the service, great. The, our Oaks gals are going to help set up out there at 11 o'clock. They're going to set up the tables and bring a few dishes. If you could bring a dish or a casserole uh, of some kind, a side dish, whatever it may be, just to bless their family as they mourn the loss of John, I know it would be a big blessing to them. And we are a church who loves to bless others. Amen? Um, so that's going to be 11 o'clock, May the 4th. Um, secondly, then, I received an email from our district office that, that I just want to read to you guys this morning to the Central California District family. This is from Pastor Rob and Debbie Songer, our district superintendent. As the family of God, there are times when we especially need to join together and pray. This is one of those times. We just heard that Pastor Charity Bartell of our Goshen Church has been at Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco for weeks, dealing with a cancer situation that has no stage but is described as extremely serious. She has had a liver and stomach bypass and has been told that her cancer is inoperable at this time. And so we are praying for this, that it will become operable through her chemo treatments. Charity is home now, and her family needs all of our prayers. And she still writes this, excited for what God is doing in my life. Due to her medical situation, she is now not only being taken to and from San Francisco for treatments, she is unable to work her second job, which is most of the family's income. 
So with far less money than it was what is usually needed to just pay the bills, this family of four are facing their usual bills, medical bills plus transportation, food, and lodging costs with their necessary trips for chemo. Love, Rob and Debbie Songer. And so once again, I just want to ask you, the family of God, as we have the opportunity to be the hands and feet, if you might consider what you could donate to this family today. If I could invite our ushers up once again. Our Goshen Church is on our district. I gotta tell you this week, um, I just spent the night in the emergency room and I, can't be, I cannot imagine what it must be like to go through what this family's going through, not knowing all the uncertainty. And so I just, just we're going we're gonna to pray. And I just ask you to open your hearts to this pastor on our district. Heavenly Father, we again just thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, we lift up the Bench family to you and pray that, that we would be able to bless this family as they just prepare for the services for John. We pray your blessing over this offering and the offerings received around the district for the Bartell family. We pray that your healing hand would be upon Pastor Charity in these days and weeks ahead. And then, God, we thank you for making a way for us to be part of your forever family, for making room at the table for us. We thank you for being an invitational God. We thank you for those that are gathered here this morning that choose to be in fellowship with one another. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless our church, bless the churches in our community, in our nation, in the world, as we just seek to further your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Worship team, if you would come up and close us out. Thank you all. If you'd like to all stand and sing along with us, we would really love that.
part of the family of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we again just thank you for today. We thank you for your kindness and for your goodness. As we go from here today, God, would you help us to be intentional towards others? May we be more like you as we interact with others. Bless us this week then as we go. And together all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And then they turned to someone they don't know and said hello. Just drop it right there and then let me know what you want to send me a text and we'll get okay. it figured out, okay? Thank you. May God bless you and make you wonder. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. Thank you. 